Hey guys, it's Mike here and you're watching In The Mix. Today we're going to carry on our FL Studio Basics tutorial and we're going to show you guys how to set up a MIDI controller, so either a keyboard or a drum pad, inside FL Studio. If you just want to find out how to do that, please skip ahead to this time because I've just got a few things to say first. Firstly, I wanted to say I've been asking you guys what sort of videos you've wanted and you've all been uh, in unison that you want mixing and mastering tutorials. There's been hundreds and hundreds of comments asking for that, so we're listening. And what we've decided to do is, for our original songs, which we're spending a long time mixing and mastering, we're going to give full in-depth tutorials which will explain every single mix decision on every single track, and we don't really care if they take half an hour, an hour, two hours, or if we have to split them into multiple videos, because I think a lot of you guys will appreciate that, and some people have said you'd rather some longer videos. So we're still going to do some quick videos like this, because they're easy to do, they're very helpful to beginners, but we know that you guys want some longer, more in-depth videos too. In Sparks, we didn't go into too much detail because we've actually learned an awful lot more about mixing and mastering since, and we wanna show you guys um, what we know to be the best practice right now. Secondly, Brad and I were considering offering up mixing and mastering services to some of you guys, so if you guys would comment down below whether that sort of thing would interest you, whether you'd uh, be up for that, or whether you were even looking for someone to mix and master your music, we'd just like to gauge whether there's any demand for that and whether we should perhaps offer that up as a service as well. And thirdly, I'd just like to thank you guys for being so helpful and supportive of all the beginners in the comment section as well because it's really good to see you guys all grouping together to help these guys out. It's not easy as a beginner getting grips of any DAW or just music production in general, so it is really good to know that there's a strong community of uh, people out there helping. So on to the tutorial now. We're going to be showing you guys how to set up a MIDI keyboard first, just like this. This is a 49 key Axiom and it's from M Audio, and it's a USB controller, so you have a standard USB cable. Uh, one side will plug into your computer, the other side has to plug into the back of the controller, and then you turn it on. The first step is to go onto the website uh, of the manufacturer of the MIDI keyboard and download any drivers or necessary installation components that you need first before you get going, and then once that's done, you want to open up FL Studio. When you are inside FL Studio, you want to navigate to the top and click Options tab, MIDI settings because we're going to be setting up a MIDI controller and this is the important bit. The first thing you'll want to do is select your controller type down here. So if you open this up there's a big list of different controllers. Now M Audio Oxygen 49 is the controller that I have here so I click on that. Now although there's lots of controllers listed not every controller will be there so if you click on this little help icon, it will open up an online forum on the ImageLine website which will help you select the most appropriate type of controller uh, for your specific MIDI controller. So even if you have a different brand or a different number of keys, there will still be one that will work for you. On the output tab, you want to navigate to the controller you have and select Send Master Sync. What this will do is this will make sure that the transport buttons and the, the, the play, pause, record, stop, start buttons will be working to control the DAW. On the input tab, you want to make sure that the Axiom 49 is enabled as well. You can enable all of them. So if you close it, we should be able to see that the record function works, play and pause works, and you can navigate forward and back in your project. You can see the playhead moving just like that. So now with the settings sorted, if you pull up the channel rack and select an instrument, the key should be controlling the piano roll. So everything should be working for you just like that. So that's how you set up a keyboard controller, uh, just to allow you to play notes in. However, some people want to know how to set up the dials and the faders on the controller. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So. To set up a fader to control something on the mixer, what you want to do is select the fader on the mixer. You want to right click on it and go link to controller. This little box will pop up and it will automatically, if the auto detect feature is selected, this little box here, this little orange check here, moving any fader or any dial will automatically map that dial to your controller. So in this case, I'm going to move one of these dials, this fader at the top here and it automatically moves with it. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. Down and up, pushes the fader up and down like that. You can also use this to record in automation of the fader. In FL Studio, you can map almost any parameter to any dial at all. So in this case, I'm gonna map this pan dial to one of the dials on the controller as well. So again, I'm just gonna click link to controller. I'm gonna move one of the dials and you can see 
the rotary encoder is changing the panning just like that. So that's how to set up a, a keyboard controller to work with FL Studio. Now we're going to be showing you how to set up a drum pad with FL Studio. So we have the Trigger Finger Pro from M Audio as well. We're not sponsored by the company, but they do make some nice simple MIDI controllers. So again, we just select the USB in, turn the power on. You'll want to again go online and download the drivers that are important. Again, you want to go to the MIDI settings and you want to this time select the Trigger Finger Pro to have the master sync and again enable it down here. The user manual should let you know if there's any important settings on the actual drum pad to configure. In my case, I have to go into the preferences and I have to select it in a mode that works for FL Studio and then load it on an empty bank as well. But that's just specific to this controller. Other controllers will have a different sequence to follow. So with that mapped out, it's basically just uh, a blank template now. Right now the drum pads will just act much like a keyboard. Just playing whatever instrument you have set it up to play. But a lot of you guys will want to know how to uh, play drums with this. So I will do another tutorial just about the FPC in FL Studio, which is FL Studio's uh, inbuilt uh, drum pad or like MPC style uh, controller. And it loads up like this, but you can see the drums I press don't actually line up with the drums in FL Studio. So I'll just show you what I mean here. They bear no resemblance. Well, that's huge, Tom. They bear no They bear no resemblance to the actual pads that you're hitting. So what you want to do is you want to select Map Notes for Entire Bank. So again, I'm just going onto here, and I'm select selecting Map Notes for Entire Bank. Now what you need to do is you need to press the pads from 1 to 16. So that's the bottom left hand side to the top right hand side. And now when I do the same sequence of events you'll see that they've been mapped. And you see that they bear exact relation to what's being played on FL Studio. So you can then use that to start uh, testing out drum grooves and uh, putting your own drums in. You can either paint those in with MIDI or record them out live and do what you want. But that's probably conversation for a new uh, tutorial. Again, the, the FPC is actually really cool. You can output all the different drum pads to different mixer inserts. So let me know if you want a tutorial specific to the FPC. To link a dial to the drum pad again, you just want to simply go link to controller and then move that dial. And as you can see, this turns as I push this dial up and down. Just like that. So it's nice and simple. Hopefully that covers most of what you need to know to get started by setting up a MIDI controller in FL Studio. A MIDI controller is a really great way to uh, boost your workflow. Uh, it would take me ages when uh, testing out synths and when Brad's experimenting with chords and melodies if we didn't have an actual keyboard to play on or a piano to play on. Uh, things would be much more difficult. The creative process would pretty much just stall for us if we had to try and uh, key in every note inside the piano roll. So uh, if you don't have one, we recommend getting one. Anything works. They're all pretty much the same unless you get a really advanced MIDI controller, the sort of thing like a complete control uh, keyboard which maps with sort of native instruments. Unless you pay a lot of money, most of the controllers are really similar. Uh, we don't, you don't need anything with many bells and whistles, just get the right sort of number of keys. There's a lot of cheap 25 key controllers, but if you're a, a pianist or a keys player, you'll probably find that very, very limiting. So 49 is quite a good number to go for. It's not, too, it's not so much that you can't fit it on a small desk, but it's not s too small that it's limiting. If you have any questions about this tutorial or you're having problems setting up your own keyboard controller, don't forget to contact us. Either leave a message down in the comments below or contact us. All of our links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.